There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Am I saving enough? Will I have the money I need to retire? Is it okay to spend money on traveling and having fun? Am I being irresponsible with my finances? How do I really know if I'm doing well financially? Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Welcome back to the pod. I hope your week has been great. I got a very nasty surprise about a week ago when my laptop, aka my entire world, (laughs) stopped working. I don't know about you, but it always feels like everything stops working at one time. And usually, almost always, it is not cheap to fix things. This is another reason why having a just-in-case fund is so important because life always throws these really interesting money curveballs. But I'm happy to report my trusty computer that has my life on it is somehow fixed about $600, $700 later, which is just absolutely ridiculous that Oh, gosh, I just can't believe like something breaks and it's at the point where it's less expensive than buying a brand new one, but certainly not what you want to actually have happen. I don't know if you've ever had anything like that happen to you around money <laughs> where it's like maybe your car breaks down and you're like, well, I could actually get a new car, but it costs me just slightly less to actually fix this car. I mean, it's I don't know. It happens all the time. It's just so absolutely infuriating. But another opportunity for me to really work on my relationship with money because those moments are actually really hard for me. It's really hard for me to want to or even feel okay spending money when something breaks. I know that sounds somewhat illogical, but I grew up in a family where if something was out sort of outside of the norm, spending money was outside of the norm, 
then it was absolutely a negative thing. It didn't even matter if it was a positive experience. It was just a negative it was a negative experience around money. So, I mean, it could be something like going out to dinner and it cost, I don't know, X amount of dollars, but we would hear about how expensive that dinner was. And it made me think, well, should I have just not eaten anything? Would that have actually been better? The same thing happened on vacations and you name it. And so I actually have carried forward (laughs) that nasty little pattern around money into my adulthood. And it is so incredibly hard for me to break that pattern around money. <laughs> I don't know if you can relate. I don't know if you have a pattern around money that you have, oh, that has just been with you since childhood. But those things, those are so just difficult to change that pattern. So in the moment when the very nice repair person told me my Apple computer was going to cost $700 to fix, I literally stopped and just took a breath and told my brain, it's okay. You have the money. You need to fix this. So just fix it and don't have a single negative thought. And so then out of my mouth came, okay, let's get it fixed. And then the rest of the day, what I really had to focus on was not focusing on how much money it actually was going to cost to fix my computer. And So I came home to tell Jeff, okay, they're going to be able to fix the computer. It's going to take a couple of days. And he said, do not tell me how much money it costs, not because I don't want to know, but because I don't want you to have a negative reaction around it. So I said, okay, fine, we're fixing it. So this is what makes your relationship with money so interesting. This is when money trauma kind of comes comes into the conversation. This is when just it it gets sticky and tricky around money. And this is just a situation that happened in my day and it literally triggered me. And so I don't know if you can relate to any of that, but if you have those moments or if you're having one of those days, I just want you to know, just take a breath. <laughs> it's going to be okay. So we're talking about a computer, which actually doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, right? What I actually want you to give two Fs about is your financial health, and more than just how much money you have. I want you to also care about your financial mental health. This is not something we hear talked about very often, but this, of course, is what we talk about on this show, Personal Finance Meets Money Therapy. So this episode was inspired by a question from Lizbeth, who sent me this message, Shauna, I feel like I'm in a bit of a tailspin I know you always say that making different money decisions depends on your goals, and I've learned so much from the show and from you honestly about money over the last few years, but I'm in a weird space. I just don't know how I'm doing financially. I know I shouldn't really care about how well I stack up, and I'm trying to do my best, but it feels like I'm alone out here making money decisions, and I don't know if they're right or if they're wrong. Could you give me any pointers on how to know if I'm doing okay financially? First, I think, Elizabeth, if I can put you at a little bit of ease, I understand the fascination with wanting to know where you stand. I think because money is this taboo topic and we don't talk about it often, it keeps us in this place of just extreme curiosity (laughs) of wanting to know how is my friend spending and saving their money? How is that person spending and saving their money? How is that person down the block that seems to have everything that I don't have? How are they spending and saving their money? And of course, we could create these uh, extreme stories and fantasies in our head, but the reality is we don't know because we're not existing in their experience. So it's human nature to want to stack up and certainly around a taboo topic like money. Comparison is really real. You've heard that saying, um, you know, comparing yourself to to the Joneses. And it's it's factual. We all do it because we just don't know how are people out there like experiencing life with money and doing things. And I find it so difficult to make money or I find it so difficult to spend money or I I'm just I get so nervous or anxious around money. So you know, it's human nature to stack up and to want to compare. We also live in a scarcity driven society. So you have been trained, my friend, you have been trained to believe that you are not doing well financially. 
Let that sink in for just a moment. I think if you listen to any TV commercials, they want you to believe that you are behind, that you will not have enough money, that it will be too late, that you are not enough, as is. Those messages are very destructive, and they do a lot of damage in this question, Elizabeth, that you have, how am I doing financially? They do a lot to really shake your mental health around money and to make you feel like you're, you're not enough. You're just not enough. And no matter what you do, you're not enough. You could, you could look at all the blogs, do all the quizzes, listen to all the podcast episodes. It doesn't matter. You're just not doing enough. And so I think really being aware of what you're listening to, the information that you're taking in, and if you find something is particularly financially triggering to you, just step away from it. Comparison with money, it also puts you back in the position of shame and fear and greed and envy and all of the negative emotions around money because you're only looking at it through the lens of the grass is greener on the other side or through a judgment lens. So my friend is buying X. Why would they do that? They don't have enough money to do that. We could go down the road with that one. But you know, we've we've all had <laughs> we've all had these thoughts and feelings around money. I think what you should be more concerned with is how are you doing financially in regards to the goals and the life that you want to live, not anybody else. So using yourself as the barometer of success, I think is critically important. So the first place to start is by asking yourself this question. Do I have a money action plan in place where I list out my goals, where I'm at, and create an action plan or steps that are easily achievable to get there? So do I have a plan where I have my goals listed? And do I have action steps for me to help me get to the place that I actually want to go? It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. So, Elizabeth, let's go back to a couple of things. So, the first thing is, whose money game are you playing? Are you playing a status game, which is an external ranking where somebody has to lose? So, we're playing a status game. There has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. This goes back to kind of how we've set up society as a whole, right? There has to be somebody that wins and there has to be somebody that loses. And most of the time you're probably going to feel like you are the one losing because everybody else has this figured out. Everybody else has been able to pay off their debt. Everybody else has been able to go on a vacation or buy a car or buy a house and you haven't been able to do it. So it's a very status-driven game of what somebody has and what you don't have. But again, you don't know anything under the hood. So you don't know, could they actually afford that thing? Maybe they got family money. I don't know. Maybe they have an inheritance could be the case, could be a million different scenarios actually happening. So you're always going to lose when you're playing the status game. And I want you to remember also wealth does not equal your income. There are a lot of people who make a lot of money and they actually do not have wealth. Wealth should buy you financial freedom and wealth should reduce your stress. That is what wealth should do. And so what you want to look at is how much of my income do I have left every month, my cash flow, how much do I have left every month, and how can I best use that to buy financial freedom and reduce my stress? So maybe it's, well, I have an extra $500 a month, let me actually start building my retirement plan. Let me pay off my debt. Let me save it towards a side hustle I want to start. Or maybe I want to buy a franchise, whatever it might be. Let me put it in my house savings fund. So it's it's using the money that you have to buy financial freedom and reduce your stress versus comparing somebody else's. So the other game we could be playing is your money game. What role do you want money to play in your life? I have let money in my personal life have a very big role. 
And it's kind of ironic because money is actually the thing I do for a living. So in some regards, I really feel like money is inescapable for me. And sometimes that is great. And sometimes that really makes me want to just curl up in the side of the floor and like throw up, honestly speaking. And so for me, the last couple of years have really been an examination of what role do I actually want money to play? Can I actually really look at it? as an energy? Can I look at it as a tool? Can I look at it as something that doesn't have any emotion? So I actually don't need to put any emotion on it. Can I just noodle that for a while? I've been noodling it for a couple of years. I, I'll report back <laughs> when I figure it out. I'm still trying to work on that one. What do you want to use your money to create? Do you want it to create time? Do you want it to create freedom? Do you want it to create ease, generational wealth? What do you actually want to use your money to create. That is the start place for defining your money game, really. And then what are the rules of your money game? So hint, you actually get to create these, even if you're living paycheck to paycheck, which honestly, most Americans are. So I don't want you to feel bad if you're in that specific position. Again, it has absolutely no impact on the amount of income. You could be making a million dollars and be living paycheck to paycheck. So if you make what you consider to be not a lot of money, I don't want you to get in the place where you're thinking, I'm not good enough and I'm never going to be able to create wealth. All right. So I, I just don't want you to, to do that. This is where it's really important to know your numbers, to figure out what is going on in your bank account, to really have the knowledge and the information then to be able to create changes. And I know that's scary and stressful and not something you always want to spend time on, but even doing it for just a couple of months will help you get to a place where you can feel, I I, I think, a sense of freedom, a sense of ease around your money. So let's just play a game. Let's say I dropped $10,000 in your bank account today. What would you do with it? Most of us would probably just leave it in there and then it would just gradually disappear down the vortex of our bank account that happens. Not your fault, just happens when we leave money in our bank account, just a reality. But let's say you had a list of something like, I'm going to save $250 a month of my Roth IRA. I'm going to pay off at least $5,000 of credit card debt. And I'm going to devote an extra $300 every month to that payment. I'm going to fund a 529 college saving plan for my child with $150 a month. I'm going to contribute to my travel fund. I'm going to save $100 a month of my fun fund, money I can spend on absolutely anything. I'm going to start contributing the max in my 401k plan. You have some direction. You know, you can either break that $10,000 up amongst your goals or put a chunk towards paying off your high interest credit card debt or maxing out your Roth IRA. The point is, You've got choices because you created a list. You created some action steps. You are playing your own money game. Now, let's say if you didn't have an emergency fund in place, I'd probably suggest saving something in that first, a month, two months of expenses in there so you have a little bit of a pad. You don't need to be, nor you don't need to hire a financial planner to create a list like this. You just need to know your goals and know some numbers, but I think you also have the need sometimes for a little bit of hand-holding. So starting in September and October of this year, I'm actually going to open up six spots of one-to-one money coaching and financial wellness checkups with me. I haven't done this in a very long time, but I'm, I'm so excited to do this. And in case we haven't met before, if this is the first time listening to this podcast, I am a certified financial planner and certified trauma of money expert. So I've got you covered with both the money side and the mental health side of money. There are two different ways we can work one-on-one. One One is a VIP and one is a monthly where we're going to exchange videos and texts and uh, it's a lower priced option. So if you're interested in learning more and saving one of those spots, they're going to go by fast. I've got a waitlist form you can fill out by going to bit.ly slash one, the number one, two, T-O, one, the number one, money coaching. I'm going to have that link in the bio. So you absolutely don't have to remember that. But 
if you want to snag one of those spots and you want to work together for the next three months to kind of end this year in a good financial place, a good financial mental health place, I would absolutely love to work with you. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. 
This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. So kind of along those lines is, what is your number? So when we're talking about how financially well am I, we need to look at what is your number? How much money do you need to earn to cover your bills and fund your goals? So this goes back to really having a good grasp over your money and where it's going and looking at, is there a shortage? Am I having to pull from my savings every month or every week or whatever it might be for you? Is there anything I can do about it? So I often tell people that I can find money in your bank account and you can do it too. It is a process and sometimes it's a scary process. This goes back a little bit to the hand holding. But you can absolutely go look at your most recent bank statement, analyze and categorize every single expense that has come out of it, and look at it. Where is this money going? Is there anything that is shocking or alarming? Is there anything that maybe I can change or shift? Or maybe I found subscriptions I don't need, or maybe I'm spending too much on something and I'm not even using it. So many people have gym memberships that you never use. You never go to the gym. And I realize that might not be a lot of money, but let's say it's $100 a month. I mean, there's a lot you could do with $100 a month. You would be really surprised if we look at compounding, if we take that $100 a month and invest it and grow it over 30 years, the number could be really big. So don't underestimate small little tweaks and changes. And also part of this is is knowing your worth and really advocating for your skills at work or with your clients and thinking about, okay, there are two ways I can better my financial situation. One is I can earn more. Two is I can spend less. So we just talked about spending less. So this is about, can I earn more? And you know, I think no matter how much money you earn, You are always going to feel like you're behind. This goes back to the scarcity. We're always going to feel like we're not making enough money. And that's because these negative feelings around money are easier to think about than the positive feelings. It's easier for us to go to the negative place than it is for us to say, hey, you know what? I know my worth. I don't think I'm getting paid my worth. I'm actually going to fight for that. That is actually a harder shift for your brain to take than the... I'm not making enough money. I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. I'm not going to be able to do the things I want to do in life. So I'm a terrible, horrible person. <laughs> I don't know if that resonates with you, but that is definitely the the train wreck that happens. So try something out. I want you to write down how many times you think about money a day. And I want you to put a plus next to the positive feelings and a dash or negative symbol next to the negative ones. And I want to to really examine those negative feelings. What are they? Where do they come from? <laughs> are they yours? Are they borrowed from somebody else? Are they situational based? Is it a person in your life that is causing these negative feelings? What is it? Just start having some sort of awareness of what these feelings are. Also, scarcity If there is one person in your friend group that is doing theoretically better financially than you, you can easily feel bad about your money situation. Easily. It's like, it just happens. It's not even a thought pattern. It's just, oh, that person is doing better than I am. Then I must be doing everything wrong. But remember, you're only seeing the surface. I don't know if you've ever seen that diagram of an iceberg a huge percentage of the iceberg actually exists under the water. There's very little of the iceberg that actually sticks up above the water. And so when we're looking at somebody else in our friend group, we're only seeing that top part of the iceberg. We're not seeing anything that has gone on below or that is existing below. And so I just, you know, I I say this to, to caution you to just pause and think, Because my friend is doing well financially, does that have to automatically mean that I am not doing well financially? 
do those two things have to exist in that way? Or could it exist in a manner of my friend is doing well financially, but I am also doing well financially? So coming back to knowing your number, things like stress, fear, anxiety, they can really cloud your ability to see your number. So if you're doing the experiment where you're looking through your bank statement and you're categorizing your expenses, please don't do it in a moment of fear, anxiety, or stress. Do it in a place, in a situation where you feel relaxed and you feel like you can confidently look at your numbers without easily judging yourself because that's not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is literally to find money in your bank account. The point of the exercise is to say, am I spending and saving my money in a way that lines up with the vision I have for my life? That is how you diagnose if you're doing well financially, not the blame game that we instantly and automatically kind of go into. Another thing to think about is to rewire how you look at success because you're never going to measure up to society's expectations and comparisons for your money. You can take endless quizzes about how much money you should have saved by X age or invested or whatever the quiz is. And even if you're doing well, there always going to be something about the results that make you feel less than. That's sort of the point of some of these quizzes. It's really maddening and frustrating to me. So the fix is you can rewire success. What does money success look like in your life? What are the components of money success? Is there a dollar amount? If there is a dollar amount, why that number? Can you dig down and actually provide some real factual evidence for that specific number? Is it things that you want to have? Is it feelings that you want to have? What does success look like for you? Because that, when we're talking about how well are you doing financially, we want to measure up to that vision of success for your life. That is the comparison that you are doing. And it's an internal comparison, not an external comparison. Maybe it's as simple as each day journaling 10 things that you're grateful for and staying positive in your thoughts and having a weekly money date to track your progress and make small tweaks and setting up automatic savings for your goals. Maybe that's success. Maybe it's a, it's simple. Maybe success is being able to pay your bills and have a little left for some fun each week. Maybe success is funding your retirement account. Maybe success is being able to save enough money to take off three months when you have a baby. It doesn't matter what it is. It's your definition of success. And so that's where the spotlight needs to be on. And this sounds all very simple. I'm sure you're listening. You're like, yeah, of course, Shauna, of course, I've got to figure out what my own version of success is. But the actual practical art of doing this, that is the tricky part <laughs> because of the emotional load, the mental load around money easily, just easily clicks in. I talked about that example of my computer and how easy it is for me to go to a place of just really being knocked sideways because I need to replace something on my computer that broke. It's it's a electronic. Of course, something is going to break. I mean, it would be ridiculous not to think that that isn't going to happen, but it doesn't mean that it's any easier for me. See how that works? So let's talk about some money fundamentals. I want you to be aware of your relationship with money because that is an important piece of your financial health. How well am I doing financially? We've got to look at the numbers, but we also got to look at your financial health. We got to look at how do you think, act, and feel about money? How do you interact with money? Who are the people in your life that make you scared, feel judged, feel stress, shame, any of those real emotions around money? And are they people that you actually need in your life? Are there other good people that make you feel good about your money? Oh, can we have more experiences with those people? How do we start to create a good relationship with money? It starts with your thoughts and feelings and really understanding them and understanding where they come from and also understanding what are you so afraid of? Ooh, what is your biggest money fear? 
where does that come from? Why does that exist? What can you do about that? Mm, That's a fun thing to think about today. You can also think about what are some of the, I call them naughty, but they're just money patterns that exist. So again, I have a tough time spending money on things that are outside of the norm and being okay with that, not making a comment about it. That is a pattern that exists that came from my childhood. And that pattern gets in the way of me having a good experience with money and also gets in the way of me spending money and understanding that money is flow. Money flows in, money flows out. This is just the way things happen. And instead, what happens is I let those moments like paralyze me to a point that is just somewhat ridiculous and somewhat, it doesn't make sense, but that's what happens to me. So you might have money patterns that have to be that extreme for you, but there are probably money patterns that exist that upon analysis Maybe there's a better way to interact with your money. Maybe there are some money mistakes that you need to let go of. I've talked often on the show about an exercise I call financial forgiveness, where you take out a piece of paper, you set the timer for 15 minutes, and you just get everything out of your head, every single mistake, should have, would have, could have on that piece of paper. When that 15 minutes is up, you look back at that piece of paper, and then I need you to destroy that piece of paper in whatever way feels good to you burn it, throw it away, shred it, tear it up, put it in the trash can. It doesn't matter. There is a physical response that happens when we release on paper and then when we let it go. All right. And just a note on mistakes. If this is you, there aren't any original mistakes. We all make the same version of the same mistake over and over and over again. So don't feel like your mistakes make you feel like you're any lesser than a human being. There might also be roadblocks to your goals or your thinking around goals that are getting in the way of you doing well financially. What is that roadblock? What is that thing stopping you? If your goal is to pay off your debt, what is getting in the way? If it is money, that's very real, right? That's a very real reason all right, this goes back to knowing our numbers. Can we really understand our money flow? Is there anything we can do about it? Which goes back to knowing your worth. Is there any way we can make more money? So see how this kind of, it's just all very cyclical. And then also thinking about the money lies that don't serve you anymore. Are there lies that you've told yourself about money that you just need to really kind of let go to get in a good relationship with money so that we can really bridge the gap on that piece of financial health. And then the last thing about money fundamentals, the tracking your cash, just again, really knowing where your money is going. I've got a free cash tracker that I've used every single month for years and years. I will link it in the show notes. You can download it. You can make it your own. You can change the categories. You can fill it in. But what it's going to look at is looking ahead in a month, So you're going to write down what you think you're going to spend. And then the second column, you're going to write down what you actually spent at the end of the month. And you're going to just compare the two categories and say, okay, what went well and what didn't go well and what do I need to change? It's numbers. It's real data. It's real information. I promise you after the first month, it is not so scary. And it lets you make tweaks and changes. So you can really say, you know what? I am doing well financially. Maybe the numbers aren't exactly what I want them to be, but I feel in control of my money and I feel like I can I can make these tweaks and changes and and really have a positive impact on my money. So long-winded question, am I doing well financially? There are lots of things to think about to answer that question, Lisbeth, and to anybody else who is wondering that. Again, I come back to what we talked about very beginning of this episode was letting go of the comparison game. I think that is the first place to really start with answering that question. Am I doing well financially? And then beyond that, we just, we've got to dig into the numbers and we got to look at them and and we got to think, how do I use these numbers? How do I use this money flow that's coming into my bank account? How do I use it to help me get to the place I want to be? Me, me, me. 
be, be selfish, be focused on you. And that is the number one way to really answer that question. Am I doing well financially? I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, if you're interested in grabbing one of those one-on-one money coaching spots, I will link that in the show notes, as well as the cash tracker that I talked about in this episode. And of course, I will link all the sponsors as well that make this show possible. I will see you back here in a few days, my friend, for a brand new episode. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC.